Sean Haney here with realagriculture.com. We're at Farm Tech in Edmonton, Alberta, and right now we're joined by Mark Young from Fe Climate Field View. How's it going today, Mark? Climate Corporation, yeah, very good. Yeah, Thanks yeah. for having me. So how long have you been with Climate? Uh, almost three years now. Okay, and what do you do there? I'm the Chief Technology Officer. So you're the guy that decides where it goes in the future. That is my job. That yeah, is a I lot of responsibility, my friend. Yeah, it is, it is, but it's a it's a fun job. So what is what, what interests you the most about, because this is a really amazing time in this space. It is. There, there's obviously a lot of venture capital that's going into the space. There's yep. a lot of farmers that are really want to be on the cutting edge. They're really, really investing in the technology as well. For you, what makes it so cool? So. What's interesting, I think, in ag today, I actually grew up on a farm, and uh, and, and and my dad, uh, my dad just stopped farming. He's he turned 70, 79 in just a week or so. In farming terms, he's young. It, it, yeah, <laughs> seventy nine is is pretty good. For, yeah, you know, yeah. mo most farmers are thinking about retiring by that yeah. point. But um, so I grew up on a farm, and my dad wanted me to go into technology. You know, uh, to, to basically not be a farmer uh, because it was frustrating as hard you know it's 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 a hard life right yeah um, but at the same, so I went and I got my computer science degree and I went into technology I, I, I uh, moved right to Silicon Valley I, I spent my whole career there and then three years ago this very interesting opportunity had come up uh, Monsanto had just uh, acquired climate for the better part of a billion dollars yeah which kicked off all this new venture capital and interest in in ag tech right yeah. And, uh, and climate was at this interesting point where, you know, they needed someone with, uh, with a lot of experience in tech to come and, and help them shape this vision. Yeah. And for me, I get to take all this great experience in the technology world. You know, I was at Sun Microsystems, I was at Yahoo, I did my own venture back startup for about six years. Uh, I was at Zynga pre-IPO, post-IPO, so I've seen a lot in my tech career. You, you've been to the Puppet Show and you've seen all the strings. I've seen it, yeah, <laughs> and, so, and so now it's like, hey, bring all that cool tech experience, yeah. but bring it back home to where you grew up, where my roots are. And so I'm able to bring that back to ag, and what an incredible time it is. So, like, like I said, it's, it's such an interesting time, and you, I, hear, you can feel the enthusiasm that you have yep. for it. How do you, there, there's no shortage of ideas. Nope. So when you're thinking about the future of where some of this technology is going, how do you decide? Because I, I, I would think as I'm sitting, you know, maybe I'm sitting in Climate's boardroom right now, all I can think about is that it'd be easy to fill, you know, the post-its all over the board. And, and we be, do, and it'd be, trust me. <laughs> easy to go in a thousand different directions. Yep. So how do you kind of figure out what you're going to do with the platform? Well, it's interesting. So, you know, at, at our heart, what, what climate is, is that we're a data science company. Um, and the premise, the whole premise uh, and vision of the company is that using data will fundamentally transform agriculture. So if you think of how we make decisions in ag today, uh, you know, even I'll use my own dad as an example. You know, a lot of how he farms is an iteration on how he farmed the year before that, and yeah. which is an iteration on, from the year before that. Decisions and, are made from the gut. That's right. Uh, gut experience. You know, uh, farmers will think back to the last you know wet year they had or the last dry year they had. And, oh and yeah, I remember like be, back in '64, yeah. we had an exact spring just like this. That's exactly right. It's exactly what farmers do, to, and and that's what farming has been about, right? What data promises to do, though, is start to quantify all of those decisions. So today, think of all the decisions we make on our farm. First, we choose which crops we want to plant. We choose the type of equipment we're going to use to plant them. We choose cropping rotations. Uh, we choose uh, our chemistry programs. We choose our fertility programs. There's all these decisions that happen, You know, more than, more than 40 or so decisions in a season um, in, in a given farming operation. And we make every single one of those decisions roughly based on our past experience, right? And 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 farmers are great scientists. They they conduct their own experiments all the time. You know, farmers are constantly ex experimenting with different hybrid selections or different po seed po seeding populations or different products. Like you'll see farmers leave test strips all the time to oh, see yeah. if you know compare products and stuff like that. So farmers are constantly um, you know experimenting. But think of the scale of that experiment. I have to go an entire year to conduct an experiment, and I can only do it on what on my number of acres, right? So, or, or so. my experience, because every year's different. That's right. That's right. Weather is something that, despite our best efforts, we haven't quite figured yeah. out yet, right? Work uh, on that, please. Uh, yeah, Work yeah, yeah. That. I keep telling that team all the time <laughs> to figure that out. So, 
what data science promises is that, well, what if we take all of the acres together, all of the decisions, and we start to really fill in all these things and start to be able to quantify it. So I can say, you know what? The effect of increasing your population another 3,000 seeds mm -hmm. per acre is X. Or the effect of timing your planting date, for example, this week versus two weeks from now will be Y. Or using um, you know, mid-season satellite imagery to say, you know what? It looks like you've got a, uh, some sort of pest pressure uh, in this region. You may need to go take a look. Like these are all ways to quantify the decisions that we make on the farm. So that, in a nutshell, that's the vision. The vision is we are going to use data to start to make better decisions. Yeah. And we're just start, finally starting to, to, to unwrap all that. So FieldView is new to Western Canada, mm -hmm. recently launched. How, does, how do the different areas of the world, how do they rate or how are the, what are the differences in terms of adoption? Yeah, so, so the, the company started very much in row crop space, corn and soy. The uh, state had to begin with an I. It, it, for, the, for the most part, that's right. And if you think about, well, how are you going to launch a startup in agriculture? <laughs> North Dakota, nope, it doesn't begin with I. <laughs> Pick it, picking corn and soy for a number of acre standpoint and a customer base standpoint is a really smart thing to do, right? Yeah. So, so we, we've, we've very much built our base on the corn and soy acres. Um, we've then expanded out into, into wheat and canola and some of the other, uh, some of the other cereal grain crops and things like that. Um, you think of geography, we've expanded now into Brazil and Canada. We're testing now in Europe as well. Russia at all? Uh, Ukraine, yeah, yeah. We're, we're, we're testing in Ukraine. So, and, and there's, those, those geographies are very specific. So when you look at Brazil, it looks, it's very heavily corn and soy, right? We can leverage a lot of our investment on more acres. But it's been interesting because the, the nature of, of farmers, um, in, in some ways, it's the same. I can talk to a farmer anywhere in the world. They they, they will still talk about the weather, no matter yep. where I am. Credit, uh, weather, yep, markets. Yep, 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 exactly. But there's a lot of nuances. And so it was interesting when we took our U.S. product to Brazil, you know, Brazilian farms tend to be larger. They tend to not necessarily be owner-operated. Right. And so the yep. problems are slightly different. Also, the connectivity isn't there in Brazil. You know, we don't have cellular connectivity in the middle of a field in Brazil. Yeah. So we have to figure out those problems. So we have subtly different things. You know, as we got here into Western Canada, we need to get uh, more into the air seeder support and things like that to support the different uh, crop types. But the unifying thing is data. The unifying thing is wherever we are, farmers getting their data and unlocking it off of the hardware, you know? Uh, I talked to farmers, you know, like I said, I've been doing this for three years. Having data is not new. We've had instrumented oh, planters yeah. and tractors for 10 years. At Farm least. records were on a sheet of paper yeah. that were flinging around the truck. Absolutely, absolutely. But when I talk to, to, to folks, well, where's your data? A lot of times it's on the monitor, still sitting on the monitor. Yeah. The most advanced uh, growers were, were you know, loading and offloading up to thumb drives and handing their thumb drive to their agronomist or their retailer or whatnot. Deal with this. Or, yeah, or putting it on a hard drive and you ask them, well, where's your hard drives? Well, they're in my office. Here's a stack of them. Yeah. You know? And so the, you know, we've had this, this, this data capable uh, equipment for a number of years, but we haven't used it. We haven't done anything with the data. So the, the big revelation is, uh, you know, no matter where we go is, it's unlocking the data. It's bringing, I mean, when we, when we plug uh, our drive device, which is a, it's a hardware device, plugs into the, the CAN bus port of a piece of farm equipment. And, and uh, for example, harvest time is a great time to do this. Plug it in the combine and the, and the grower starts to visualize their harvest in real time. It's like a little light bulb comes on, you yeah. know, and that data is streamed to the cloud. They can share it to their uh, to their retailer or their agronomist. Uh, they can share it with each other. Um, we've had a, a really neat. There's a really neat feature in our cab app that lets you do remote view, and so oh, you yeah, don't yeah. you can actually see what's happening in the cab remotely, not being in the cab. Well, you're in Mexico on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> we've had that. One. My favorite one so far. There was a there was a there was a young guy who was having uh, his first child was being born. Oh. And it was during, uh, I think it was during planning, if I remember right. And yeah. it was killing him that he wasn't in the planner. And so here he is bedside, his first child's being born, and he's watching the planner run on his on his iPad. You Why know, is the planner going everything. so fast? Yes, exactly. That's yeah. exactly right. Yeah, so. You know what, in adoption, I go to sports for a lot of comparisons, mm -hmm. right? And so in, baseball was one of the first, we have Moneyball, Billy Bean, where... Yep. He, they started talking about um, arbitrage and mm -hmm. using data to make better decisions. Now, 
everybody. I don't think there's a baseball team now in all of Major League Baseball that's not using data, doesn't have a data scientist, maybe multiple people. Yep. Yep. It's Absolutely. a great time to be uh, a computer science whiz kid, so congratulations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so, and I think agriculture is kind of the same thing. We're, we're kind of, we're just, it absolutely you know, is. We're, we're sort of where hockey is, where we're sort of just starting yep. to play with it. Yep. Soccer. Moneyball is a great example, you know, that was sort of controversial at the time, you know, yeah. uh, to, to use data in that way. And, and you know, just think of the disruption. Think of the way scouting was done, right? Yeah. It, you know, it's gut. Think of the yeah. conversation well, we his, just had. His was, daddy was a good player. It was, you know, I've been a scout for 20 years. Yeah. I know a, a good player when I see one. I use yeah. my gut, et cetera. And then Moneyball really started to change yeah. all of that and multiply data. And ag is going to be exactly the same thing. You know, five years from now, everyone's going to be using data. No, it's pretty exciting, and you're pretty, uh, you're very lucky to be the, one of the people that's really making some of the decisions. It's fun. To where the future is. So, yeah, it's a yeah, lot of fun. I can only imagine. And and what's what's great for me to see too, you know, now I think back, you know, when I was. When I was younger and, and my dad was encouraging me what to go to school for, he was like, yeah, go into tech or whatever. Yeah. Now, it's different. Ag is cool again, right? Yeah. We're, we're all this technology, I mean, I talk to, you know, autonomous and robots and, and drones and satellites. Yeah. I mean, it, it sounds crazy for, for some old timers, you yeah. know, to, to feel this technology coming into play. But for finally, you know, for a change, Ag is cool again. That's and, one of the things we saw at Agritechnica, where they're talking about, you know, uh, software platforms, working with drones, working with autonomous robot, and all working together in sync and some of the possibilities out there in the future. So yep. very, very exciting. Mark, it's great to meet you, man. Thank great you very discussion. much.